as I was praising, uh, I, I thought about uh, I, a few people uh, who should definitely come here and uh, listen to this message. But then I felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me, hey, you listen to me. This message is for you. Amen. Who are you trying to teach? And uh, since that moment on, I, I, I can feel one more time that I really want to hunger for this. And uh, if I am blessed, you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. If I am filled, it will overflow to you. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay. With that in mind, I believe there are two types of Christians uh, in the world. And uh, and I was praising to God, uh, praying to God, God, I don't want to be the first kind. Would you pour your mercy upon me that I will become the second kind? So, what am I talking about? first kind of Christians. Perhaps some of you belong to the first type. But one thing again, I pray to the Lord that by His grace, by His mercy, I want to belong to the second type. Perhaps continuously on to the second type. So first type of Christians, uh, you might be uh, loving God sincerely, genuinely, and uh, that's why uh, you never miss uh, Sundays and you you want to volunteer a lot of things and uh, willingly you want to do, willingly uh, you want to serve God, love God, and uh, you do tidings and you, got, you get involved with evangelism and even oversee missions. Uh, yeah, and you wonderfully people see uh, the average uh, characteristics of Christians uh, but somehow something missing but then the second type of Christians by God's grace because they have this this missing part uh, for many, many Christians. Uh, this missing part, but then they have it. What is it? This life uh, continuously flowing spring up yes. continuously Amen. that nothing nothing blocks nothing stops that yes. life that's why although first type of Christians even though most of time uh, 
They are happy with God. They are happy with Christ. They are happy with their Christian uh, life. But when <coughs> hardship, hardships come to their lives, when uh, circumstantial issues, whether they are good or bad, they are influenced by that and they are swayed by that, But then again, second time, because they are enjoying this, this life that is flowing from God's grace, understanding the grace of God, what it is, and enjoying that grace of God. Realistically, personally, and that life, the power comes up continuously, springs up continuously yes. out of his this uh, central central element of his being. That that life and enjoyment of that life continuously overflows yes. not only that life not only does uh, that life touch the life other lives but then because it, this person is full of this life filled with this life he doesn't see anything else. He's not affected by anything, anything but this life, Christ Jesus. I want that. I pray to God, God, yes, you are the life. You are the life. And you, the life, is in me. And you are living the life in me. You, the life, is living through me for me Jesus I don't say, I don't say this to put you down or you know depress you I told you that that's that's what I want but I have it I have it. You have it. I have it. You have it. You have the life. I have the life. If we don't see that, if we don't see that truth, we miss it. What do you think? Those people of faith Uh, that are recorded in the Bible. Many, but not all, many people of faith, models of faith. What do you think the difference between those models of faith and, uh, and rest of the Christians? What, what is the difference? What is the difference? See, just just one thing one true faith of enjoying this life of Jesus Christ in his grace amen, amen. but that's not far that that true enjoyment of the life okay it's not all the way up there. That's right. It's not far in church history. That's right. Who is the life? Where is it? Or where is he? Jesus is the life and he's in you. What is
is true victorious Christian life. This is what I'm talking about. Real Christian life, normal Christian life, true victorious Christian life. What is it? True faith in only Christ That's the secret, okay? Secret of the victorious Christian life. Faith in only Christ plus only grace. Amen. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. But when you really understand only Christ, it means only grace. That's right. You cannot separate those two. That's right. Okay? Amen. I want to add a little more to the end. Secret of the victorious Christian life is faith in only Christ plus only grace that you find in union with Christ. Yes. <clears throat> Please turn your Bible to Romans chapter 6. Do we have the PowerPoint? Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. Okay, it's coming up. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Okay. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in sin, in it? No way. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all, but the life that He lives, He lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Praise the Lord. Amen. In short, it is Galatians 2.20. Putting all those verses, not long, but 10, Romans chapter 6, 1 through 14. And it's beautiful that Apostle Paul uh, uh, epitomizes in one, one verse, Galatians 2.20. I have been Christ, uh, crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, I who live. But Christ lives in me, but in, and the life which I